whole thing, and one that I'm going to prove. Um, right, let's see if we can get this working. So, um, at BCA, we are first and foremost engineers, I guess you might say. So, we do a lot of trying to produce things that would otherwise be done on a, you know, on a bigger scale. I mean, as I said, we do like 25 million transactions a day. We do it with very little kit, very little um, fuss, and we are an unusual business that we can never not be available to people. We're in people's checkouts, we're at checkouts worldwide, and what that means is that even five minutes downtime over the course of a year is utterly intolerable for us. So if you imagine trying to build a car, um, trying to build a car, okay, fine, wheels and an engine, that kind of stuff, when you can probably bodge something together, you know, with a fighting chance of making something that might work. And if you're a really good engineer, you might be able to make a good car. But imagine how you would make a car that will run without stopping for the next 16 years. That you can change it entirely, you can change the tyres, the wheels, the frame, the interiors, the engine, all of those sorts of things. How you can do that, how you can refuel it without this thing ever stopping, and that is the challenge of a SaaS business like us. Um, and so one of the things that's very important to us is to try and look at ways we can use these incredible skills that we have to use to do good things. And so obviously what we decided to do was to make the world a better place um, by looking at beer. Um, Ralph, who is, where's Ralph gone? Ralph, <coughs> Ralph is um, our design lead in the business and also our beer lead. Um, and I guess one of the things that we started this year was to say, well, do you know what, we've got some really cool tech in the business, we've got some really cool things actually we want to try and do, um, but how can we find a fun project to actually justify spending a bit of money on these bad boys here? Um, and this was what the project was. So, sort of bear with me a little bit because this does kind of make sense. Your normal person, if you want beer, that is what you do. You go get your can, you open it, happy days, right? Now that's what a normal person would do. That is not what a PCA person would do. I'll be quite honest about this. What you have to do as being a true PCA engineer is to think about the most complicated, baroque, sophisticated solution you could have for this and then make it look really pretty. If any of you look behind this, don't. <laughs> it's terrible, it's massively unsafe. At some point, I'm going to be sued, but it looks awesome from the front. And I'll tell you why. What we wanted to do was to make it very easy for us to have beer. And that means, you know, cans, there's aggravation, you've got to open them, you always run out, and those sorts of things. So how can we make a better, more scalable solution, just as we do for our search services? So, first part of the puzzle, and I apologise for these pictures, because I just got an iPad Pro upstairs and was playing around with a pencil, and I got a B&R, so this is what you get. And Ralph was busy doing important things. Um, so, Ralph delivers cakes to us. We get sort of like four or five a uh, month now. For us, we do uh, sort of beer Fridays that tend to be any other day of the week where things get a bit stressful. But they come in cakes, you know, big old things, and we've used those before, which are great. You put a pipe on the end and that kind of stuff, but it's messy and it's complicated and no one knows how the thing works, and then Craig gets covered in stuff and no one wants that. <laughs> but also, the keg needs to be in the fridge, but the keg is too big for a fridge. So what we needed to do was to buy a big fridge, to buy a big, cheap fridge to put it in. So this is currently called a kegerator. And when I say cheap fridge, it wasn't entirely cheap. Um, and when I say there's one keg, there's not this three. Um, there's only two taps at the moment, but that's all part of you know, the scalability of a good design solution. So we've got capacity there. If one of the beers go off, we've got something there just in case. You never want to be without things. This is an important engineering premise. So you've got your beer. Happy days, and now it's cold, even better. But then you need to kind of get something to get the beer out of there, and you can't have pumps and stuff, because apparently that doesn't work. And in the past, Ralph had these tiny little cylinders of CO2, and when he remembered them, they were always running out after about sort of six or seven things. And the number of times that we'd have to send him off on his push bike, Jen would shout at him because he'd have to climb in and break in the shed and all these sorts of things. This, again, was not a good engineering solution to it. So. A big tub of CO2, the sort of thing that you might, well you wouldn't stick to a diver because I guess it would kill them, but it's that kind of size of gas that we're working on. But you also, just like a diver, you know the CO2 in there is under huge amounts of pressure. If you put huge amounts of pressure in these bad boys, 
bad things happen. Even very small amounts of pressure, to be honest. We've had a few spillages and a few electrical incidents. <coughs> but that's, that's, that's another story. Then you realise that you can't really put the CO2 cylinder inside the fridge. And so in order to get it inside that, then you've got to drill holes in the fridge. Now, there are two important things as an engineer you should always remember, and that is safety first and safety first. What you don't do is what we did, which is to forget to turn the fridge off and then start drilling into the side of it, and also to not even vaguely think that there might be cooler tubes on the side. Thankfully, because it was a cheap fridge, there weren't. And thankfully, because our CFO came past and unplugged it just as I was drilling into it, I didn't cut, sort of get electrocuted. So that's fine. So, so far, if you think of the solution, going from a can that you open, we have a fridge from ASOS that got delivered and didn't quite fit under the things, but that was fine. We've got a giant cave, we've got holes all over the place, we've got a regulator that would nick from a diving well, and then we've got a pipe. At the moment, <coughs> you could possibly argue we have not improved the solution. But then there's the next thing. This is where we actually now need to look at what technology is available to us. As the sort of lead-in for this said, we need to look at low-cost technology to make things better. So first of all, well, if the cake's in there, how do we know how much we've got left? You know, these are important things that we need to understand. So we can put a flow meter on the stuff as it comes out of the keg so that we know exactly how much we've used. For those of you who have used Charles and Godfrey, Charles, sadly, is not working today in the flow meter at least. But Godfrey, every time you dispense some uh, beer from it, it will tell you how much is gone there. It tells us how many beers have been poured, how much of the keg is left. So you don't have to look because we're lazy, lazy developers having built a really, really complicated solution. But we've got a flow meter about how we're going to understand what that flow meter is telling us. So now we need to use tech. Now, a server, and we have many old ones tucked in the back, is possibly a bit overkill. A Raspberry Pi, on the other hand, which some of you may have heard of or may have been used, tiny, tiny little credit card sized piece of technology, costs about 20 quid, little computer basically. You can wire those into these things, and it does stuff. That's great, so we've got a Pi doing this kind of stuff, so now we know instead of looking at the can, you pick it up, I go, no, it's empty. But we now have a way of doing that on a decent scale. This is good. But now we're kind of conscious that, you know what, this is all quite big and bulky and doesn't really look the part. So how are we going to make it look pretty? And so this is very much where Ralph comes in. Well, actually, I say Ralph. Ralph is the next stage on from this, because this <coughs> thing, we wanted to put in one of these little squares here, um, but also we wanted it strong. Again, a good engineering principle that we should all abide by is you should always make sure it's strong under duress. Now for this, an inch and a half of marine scale ply seems like a sensible amount. It will probably stop a bullet at point blank range, but it will certainly hold a beer tap. And if the regulator goes, it might contain the explosion. Again, thinking out of the box. It doesn't look that pretty if it's just got a hole in it. And actually, we want to see how much beer we've got left in it. So what we'll do, is we can get the pie to drive a screen that we've nabbed off Amazon for about 60 quid. That looks really, really pretty, but then again, this is a piece of ply that we've cut with a really dodgy hacksaw. We've got a hole in there for reasons that we'll go on to in a bit, but that was thinking ahead, we were quite proud of that. And the screen sort of stuck in, but it looks a bit ugly. Then was the genius idea. Because what you can do is we want it to make, we want things to look shiny, to look glossy, to look pretty. And there is nothing shinier than a mirror, especially a two-way mirror. Now, it turns out if you go on the internet and start to try and buy two-way mirrors, people ask you lots of very, very <laughs> sensible questions. And it is a tricky conversation to prove that actually what I'm trying to do is to build a beer tap that is the size of a bathroom mirror. Honest. Um, those were some very challenging conversations. But we got away with it, both of them as well, just in case. Um, now, the mirror goes on all of this sort of stuff. And then, of course, the bit that you need, the final bit of the puzzle, is the tap. The tap that then comes through the mirror so that we've got a way of displaying everything it looks really, really pretty. You can actually almost overlay what's behind things because it's projecting, obviously, through the screen just the text that we want. And this all looks really good. And then you can colour stuff in. I only discovered this halfway through. <laughs> <laughs> now, because we're developers and because we like to make things even more complicated, I've got all of this shenanigans instead of a can of beer. But what I want to do is to be able to control, when we put a new keg on, what's shown on here. I want to be able to potentially remote desktop from home or from an international location to see what our beer status is. This I can now do with the app. The app was something that Henry put together. And this, ironically, was the testing ground for 
possibly one of the most important bits of technology that we're launching in the next kind of month or two, and I'm genuinely not joking, um, but trying to get the concept of the app there and trying to get this working. And so now we do have, genuinely have an app that goes through the domain of, I think, beer one and beer two dot PCA predict dot com. Uh, they are external, just in case you try. Um, so that we can control all of these things. You can even put offensive messages on the top here, usually involving grade. And these are all useful things. Useful things are necessary bits of technology that make our life better. So, as a software business and an engineering business, obviously you can do this. But why would you do this when you could do that? When you can have all of that that never works, <laughs> that you have to reboot these damn things every single morning, that twice we've had pretty catastrophic explosions. We had one incident with the fridge where we turned, turned so cold that all the cakes froze, and then all sorts of bad things happened to the chemistry and no one was really safe to drive home. But this is a much more interesting solution, and one that has actually taught us an awful lot about all the components involved. And for those of you who don't believe that it is a real thing, for a start, Charles and Godfrey are there, not my choices of names, Henry. Um, but this is actually how you build it. This is a terrible piece of marine pie with the raspberry pie stuck in it, all the pipe work behind, three kegs in the fridge as of this afternoon. The app where you pick the type of beer and the amount that's on there, and for those of you who haven't had a good look, the craziness that is the two-way mirror with the screen behind it. And it's nonsense, but it's also quite good fun. And it's the start of, I think all of us are trying to do a couple of things along the same lines. I know that um, Henry is already working on his own um, version of this at home. I think, what are you trying to do with that, Henry? Uh, it's designed to control the light levels of my house. So every room has like, an ambient light sensor, and there's a control mirror in the hallway when you come in, and you just ask it. So if I want to watch a film, lights are in front of down. <laughs> Sensible use, why have a light switch? <laughs> when you have a mirror that you talk to that involves all of this. Welcome to PTA. Thank you very much. <laughs>